Why worry about something that isn't going to happen? Why worry about something that isn't going to happen? Oh, that's perfect. These are the exact words that the head of the KGB says to Valery Ligasov after the latter exposes the lies of the Soviet government in the last year's hit docudrama, Chernobyl. The line is menacing enough within the context of the show, but when you think about it and look around you, you realize that in hindsight, it almost sounds prophetic. Who would have thought that just a year later, we would be facing a crisis which, in all likelihood, is going to change our way of living? Not unlike the Chernobyl disaster, one of the worst nuclear disasters in the history of mankind. It's also one of the best TV shows ever made, though it's not something you might want to watch in current circumstances. Take my word for it. The series isn't just simply a retelling of the Chernobyl disaster. At its core, this show is about everything that happened after the disaster. How the state machinery did everything it could to curb the spread of misinformation the power that institutions have over individuals and the madness that ensues in times of crisis. In terms of radiation, Plant Director Brichano reports no more than 3.6 Srodkin. I'm told it's the equivalent of a chest x-ray, so if you're overdue for a checkup, This is like the flu. It's a lot like the flu. I like to believe that it's going to end up more like the flu virus. Yeah, it's already beginning to sound familiar, but that's the beauty of this show. It doesn't pull its punches. Instead, it forces you to experience the events of that fateful night in April 1986, an event that will forever be etched in our minds. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you, Chernobyl. The truth doesn't care about our needs or wants. It doesn't care about our governments, our ideologies, our religions. It will lie in wait for all time. Back in 1986, the Soviet Union and the United States were in the midst of a Cold War. You know, the kind where the USA was leading the charge as a God-fearing nation against those commies. Or if you have watched Dr. Strangelove, those Ruskies. Both nations wanted to do everything they could to establish their superiority. Actually, scratch that. It wasn't just a conflict between countries, it was a conflict between ideologies. Of course, neither side wants to come off across as being weaker than the other. That might be kind of tough when your incompetence has led to one of the worst nuclear disasters in history though. Throughout the TV show, we sympathize with Professor Valery Ligasov as he does everything in his power to try and come up with an effective solution to the crisis. Sure, he knows it's a lost cause, yet he did everything he could because the point was to minimize the damage. We see how he willingly chooses to tell the truth even though he knows that it will completely ruin his credibility and might even endanger his life. He isn't alone in this quest, even though he is the one who loses the most by the time this series has concluded. Chernobyl has gotten its fair share of criticism about being a mere propaganda. However, we feel that this series is anything but. The purpose of propaganda is to present a biased opinion, and Chernobyl doesn't do that. Sure, it openly criticizes the policies of the Soviet government, but it also portrays the people of the country as passionate, loyal, courageous and determined individuals. The Soviet pride isn't just some phrase that they casually throw around. Ulana Khomyuk continues to play a key part in identifying the reasons behind the disaster, even if that means working with incompetent party workers who would much rather boast about working in shoe factories before securing an important government position. She even gets thrown in jail at one point, yet continues to play her part. The Tula mine workers are willing to work in adverse conditions to prevent the contamination of groundwater. They know this will be the end of them, but they carry on nonetheless. The same is the case with the plant workers who volunteer to drain the water in the plant even if that means exposing themselves to dangerous levels of radiation. The series is littered with such examples which showcase the people of the state in such a positive light and make no mistake, it's the people who make the country, not the state, ideologies or religion. To them, a just world is a sane world. There was nothing sane about Chernobyl. When we first start watching the show, we automatically assume that the person at fault is Comrade Dyatlov. It's a very easy character to hate as well. 
since we all have had bosses who insult us, berate us, and in general abuse their power. But as you go through the episodes and learn more about the plot, you slowly come to the realization: the Atlov is just a part of a vicious cycle of abuse. He himself is answerable to his superiors, people who push him into conducting the tests under unsafe conditions so that they could cash in on bonuses. God knows that never works out. As Ligasov mentions in the opening scene, Tiatlov is an easy target. A man who doesn't have any friends in the right places is arrogant and well, simply incompetent. Tiatlov in his own words is not great, not terrible. The series is littered with examples of people who abuse their power to get their way. Some are able to turn things around like Comrade Sherbina. But then there are those who live and operate in the shadows. But you know the old Russian proverb, trust but verify. And the Americans think that Ronald Reagan thought that up. Can you imagine? We came off like a naive idiot. Naive idiots are not a threat. Do you know what's really the saddest part of the Chernobyl incident? or any other incident for that matter it's simply the fact that history repeats itself the chernobyl crisis helped highlight the effects that a nuclear meltdown could have on the world unfortunately it didn't really stop governments from their pursuit of overcoming their enemies in the nuclear arms race this crisis could have been averted if the plant workers managers and even the government had followed standard operating procedures and made the safety of the people a priority but as our current situation shows We aren't really very good at following SOPs. The silver lining though is that the series also goes on to show that no matter how hard you try, you can never suppress the truth. Whether it's Professor Ligasov or Dr. Lee, your voice will be recognized even if you yourself might not be around to witness it. You can never always be too prepared, especially when there are lives at stake. Unfortunately, the real tragedy of Chernobyl and COVID-19 is that the authorities and the states will always think why worry about something that isn't going to happen 